Uh, hello and welcome. And um, as uh, Anne mentioned, I was the CEO, founding CEO of Halo IPT, um, a company that we spun out of Auckland University with um, uh, wireless charging technology that we'd had uh, in development for a number of years, around um, I guess 20 years. So, so it's, uh, we believe that we're, we've got a technology which is actually quite well established and well industrialised and we're shifting it across into uh, different applications being the automotive space. So, um, but I have a sh uh, short presentation. I'll go through it at pace, so um, a lot of it's images. So, um, and then there's a video which sort of explains it a little better than, uh, than words, I think. Um, and I think, uh, as David just mentioned, and, and we've heard this a number of times today, you know, there is a pretty um, powerful case for electric vehicles. And, and I think um, when we look at the impact on the environment and the impact, in fact, on, um, on our local um, air quality and all that sort of thing, it's, it's a pretty profound case. And, and I think we're all here today for that reason that we believe this, um, uh, this technology is required. The other thing that we quite like about electric cars is the fact that they can use multiple sources of energy. And we already have a grid in place, so in fact it's, um, it's quite wonderful. We can take um, energy from the sun, from the water, from the wind, etc., put it all through the similar grid and get it, uh, a transport um, a system out the end of it. So, um, And as David mentioned, it's fairly obvious that it's also happening now, and there are a number of... Um, models of vehicle available already. There's a whole lot of concept vehicles. I took some of these photos at Geneva this year. And the cars are fab fabulous cars. You know, it's not like we're talking about little bubble cars anymore. We're talking about high performance, um, fantastically designed vehicles with uh, composites and all sorts of other things in them which are um, you know, fabulous, really. We think that there's some barriers to electric vehicles. Um, and they tend to revolve around the battery being uh, heavy, expensive, slow to charge and not having a big energy density. So we like to view the idea of getting energy into the vehicle um, and trying to take this vehicle mass market by reducing the sort of pain of charging. And uh, so we have a wireless charging system. The idea behind it is it's, it's pretty much automatic. It um, consists of um, a high frequency generator, a pad in the ground. We create a magnetic field, we pick that up on the vehicle and we turn that into DC to charge the batteries. Yeah. The future of electric vehicles is exciting. And how electric vehicles are charged in the future will be key to their success and growth. With stationary wireless electric vehicle charging, you simply park as you would normally and charge up. Once parked in a charging bay, charging is initiated and power is transferred wirelessly from a ground-based charging pad to a similar pad on the electric vehicle. Wireless charging involves no cables, so there's no need to plug in, no fuss, just wireless. With Qualcomm Halo technology, a high degree of misalignment tolerance means there is no need to park precisely. Just roughly position the car over the pad and start charging. Wireless electric vehicle charging offers very efficient high energy transfer, which is not affected by adverse weather such as rain or snow. Wireless electric vehicle charging makes charging convenient. You don't have to change your routine. Simply top up while you're at work, at the supermarket, or picking up the kids from school. And when you get home, you simply leave your electric vehicle to charge. Qualcomm Halo, we're also working to take wireless electric vehicle charging to the next level. Dynamic charging means your vehicle could be charged wirelessly while in motion. This means that in the future we could see vehicles with smaller batteries in lighter and cheaper cars driving long distance journeys with potentially unlimited range. 
Imagine wireless electric vehicle charging being as easy and as widespread as Wi-Fi is today. At Qualcomm Halo, we believe that the electric vehicle industry needs to work towards a single open standard for wireless electric vehicle charging, so the mass adoption and acceptance of electric vehicles becomes an everyday reality. I'll just touch on why Qualcomm's interested in this technology. They, have, um, they were founded you know, 26 years ago, and the, uh, the key first technology they uh, came up with was basically a telematics, um, uh, as David was mentioning, um, called Omnitrax, and that was for tracking um, uh, trucks with high-value goods on, and they still um, uh, do that today. And they've worked right through now to things like e-calling, which is a, um, a system on vehicles for automatically... Um, notifying of an accident and various things like that. So, so communications and um, the automotive uh, space is, is going to collide, if I can use that word without alarming people. And so I think it's like most things where the intersection of things uh, occurs, there, there's always a lot of interest and a lot of opportunity. Um, and I guess we're, that's why we're excited to be in this, in this space. Um, and I guess, you know, really just boiling this down to something really basic, the, what we think we do when we bring wireless charging to an electric car, a plug-in hybrid, a range-extended vehicle, is we just add simplicity. So we take away all the drama of having to plug the car in. You just park the car. And I guess we, you know, to do that we need the, thing, the system to be easy to integrate on a vehicle. We need it to be easy to deploy into the public space, and David's um, helping us with that. So the technology, although it's complex underneath, it needs to be simple to use, integrate, and deploy. Um, and a couple of the elements that <clears throat> allow that to happen is the fact that we've got a special magnetic architecture which allows the technology to put power over a big gap, have a small volume pad, so the pad that goes on the vehicle is the size of a laptop, um, and gives us good lateral tolerance, so you don't have to park precisely, and that's, that's quite key. Um, and I guess one other element that I just wanted to mention was the fact that we believe that there's a lot of focus at the moment on sort of big event-based charging, where you, you, know, you run the battery almost down to... Um, you know, nothing being sort of four, five or ten percent, and then you fully charge it up, and you do this every so often, a bit like you gas your car up. Well, we think that if you change the focus of this and you charge up the vehicle at home, at the workplace, at the supermarket, at the gym, et cetera, et cetera, you can then reduce the battery, and, and it takes the emphasis and the pain away from the fact the batteries are um, not hugely um, dense in energy and they are slow to charge, so we, ch we change that emphasis. And clearly to do that we have to have a technology which is easy to deploy because um, um, one of the other elements we've been doing is you know, testing this in the motorsport industry and this is a vehicle which has a 20 kilowatt wireless charger on it um, and the idea behind this is to prove the technology in the, in the sort of very vicious motorsport arena. Um, and we are specifically focused here which is um, uh, we're looking to run out a, a, a trial in London which is really about us learning all the ins and outs of deploying the technology, uh, integrating it onto uh, performance um, and production ready vehicles and really understanding the user experience. And that trial is underway now, we're um, working on the vehicles um, and we've got good support. Uh, it's in two phases. The first phase is in, with prototype vehicles, and that's very controlled. Um, the drivers are part of the trial group. Uh, and then we will move quite quickly to production vehicles, and we're working with Renault um, as uh, the first OEM to um, put this system into the fluence, and Renault will do the integration. And these vehicles will start appearing on the roads um, early next year. Um, and I will leave you with this idea that um, we are confounded by, I guess, some of our own thinking sometimes, and if we do flip this model of carrying the energy around in the vehicle uh, on its head and say, why don't we leave the, the energy in the grid where it belongs and put it into the vehicle on demand, um, and then that way we take the emphasis away from the battery even further so we can have a small, light, cheap vehicle with unlimited range. Um, and, uh, and that, to me, seems a beautiful thing, and we get to breathe the nice, clean air from it. So, thank you very much.